And it's got on the back here some of the technical specifications. Okay. Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. Finally, some time to spend in the shack, which is great. Been very, very busy. Just uploaded a very, very long video, not a ham radio video as such. It's a fault filing video on the Sansui AU417 audio amplifier, but certainly some great information on how to service to component level or my daft efforts at it. So check that video out uh, if you get a chance. Lots of toys arriving in the mail too, and I've got two boxes here. Mystery box one, which is all in grey, and this magnificent piece of equipment. It's, you know, spoiler alert, pretty obvious that it's a Hantec piece of equipment because it's written on the box, and it's actually a digital storage oscilloscope. Now, I'm going to be doing a complete video on my test bench and all the toys I've got there, all the pieces of test equipment that I've got, and a bit of a discussion of uh, what they all do, but that will be in an upcoming video. But today, we are dealing with mystery box one, the gray box. So let's uh, get this open and see what it is. Hey. Open up. We have a short lead. And an SDR switch. Now this device here allows a, an antenna to pass through it to a transceiver. And on the back here, we have an SDR output. So I can leave my SDR plugged in. It will see the antenna that I have selected. And when I transmit, it will disconnect the SDR to stop it from being damaged. Or well, that's the, uh, the plan. What's wonderful about this too is that uh, I was hoping this would be the case. It comes with the necessary uh, cord for the DC. And it also has a PTT 3.5 millimeter jack, which I won't be using. Um, it has a, an automatic sense on the uh, antenna. And as I'm using uh, QRP, should it not be an issue. But uh, we will find out <laughs> when we get it installed. Now, PL259 connectors on the back. I tend to use uh, BNC. So luckily, on the back of my other power meter on the test bench, I have these uh, PL259 to BNC uh, converters. And I'll be using those on the back of this device here. And it's got on the back here some of the technical specifications. I'll just put this up closer. Impedance is 50 ohms. Frequency range is 1.8 to 30 megs. In other words, the HF band. Uh, maximum transmit power is 100 watts. Um, it's got the size there. Power supply is 13.8. Um, and uh, yeah, and the RCA jack is for PTT. So as you can see on the front here, audio out, transmit, and uh, SDR. So we will be plugging in our 13.8 volts here. SDR will be coming out of there and we'll run our antenna through here. So I will be going off to the board now and I'll just show you how I plan to set this up. And here is the current setup I have for selecting rigs and antennas. This is the Magic Antenna Box video on my playlist. And I'm able to select either uh, six antennas or six rig selections. So we've got our rigs coming out here. Six antennas coming out here. Now, the ATU, I've actually got a selection for dummy load. Video on the channel about the dummy load construction as well. So we can select a dummy load from the ATU and also switch the ATU to the dummy load so we're not connected directly to the antenna when I'm not here. Obviously not an ideal isolation system, but better than nothing. And what the plan is, is between this selector here where we're actually going to the rig, because when I use the antenna selector box, the magic antenna box and rig box selection, I can select a rig here. So what I'm going to do is, I am going to put the SDR switch right in here. And uh, that's going to allow 
Well, I'll put it in there and I'll show you. So that's our SDR switch. And this will go to my Air Spy. SDR Air Spy. Receiver. I now have an SDR switch and an SDR radio that I can uh, look at the waterfall on. Uh, the other great thing about this is down the track, I'm playing around with receive only antennas and I envisage some form of use of this SDR switch as well. So while they're still available online um, at a reasonable price, I thought why not grab one and have a play with it and integrate it into the shack so that it can be used uh, on a regular basis. Anyway, let's get over to uh, the actual shack and I'll, I'll show you a little bit about what all this is in real life. So here we have our ATU. Uh, this is for through, and obviously I can touch up antennas if I switch over to the other side as well. And like I was saying, when it's on antenna one, it's looking at our uh, magic antenna box. And when I select other antennas like antenna two, that goes to the back of the unit. And if I switch it down to dummy load, I've selected the dummy load, which I've got underneath the bench here. So that's uh, the setup as per the board. So between the rig output and input and this ATU, there is a cable and I'm going to put my SDR switch at the intersection of that cable, I'll probably sit it on top of here. And I'll just show you where the air spy is. We'll just swing it around and have a look. And over here, we have our air spy, tiny little unit. And I've got a couple of antennas here. This one is the uh, loop on the ground, and this one here is uh, the um, rig number five output, so I can select it as a rig as well. Now, the Magic Antenna Box actually has an SDR through on it, where um, I've got a switch that should switch on and off for when I transmit. Works most of the time, not a thousand percent reliable, but um, so far, QRP on the bands that I use, it's been, it's been okay, and it hasn't blown up my SDR. So that is the main thing. But uh, this uh, commercially available unit uh, may or may not perform better, uh, but it's certainly going to allow me to uh, implement this SDR as a waterfall and have it on all the time and be able to use it. So let's get it in and see how it operates. Oh, and my beautiful QDX Digimodes transceiver from QRP Labs. I absolutely love it. Even though I'm able to operate FT8 on more bands now with the Hermes Light 2, which I have been doing, I am still firing up this thing because I still love it to death. And it, it, I have more invested in it, I guess, because I built it as a kit. And uh, you actually had to wind toroids and do a lot of work on it. So it means more to me as a result of that. Now I'm going to have to make myself a patch cable, but while I'm waiting, um, I've got this nice short cable that I made to run between my Mooncake transmitter and my chocolate box receiver, direct conversion receiver for 80 meters. So I'm going to use that cable uh, to allow me to patch in the SDR switch. And uh, so we'll get that happening. Now, as luck would have it, uh, I think uh, my mate Chris gave me these cables, the VK2NAP. So that's going to give me the length I need to actually get down to the, uh, the SDR and not have to use one of these adapters. And these adapters, I've got some good ones and some really bad ones, and I don't think that's a really good one. So um, this is definitely going to be a better option. So we will plug in and fire up and just see whether this is actually going to be a goer or not, or whether this is a uh, piece of rubbish. I've seen reviews online. There's been a thousand reviews about this uh, switch, and most people have said nice things about it. So I can assume that, uh, well, we can't make any assumptions, really. Could be a Friday after you, afternoon uh, SDR switch. 
in which case it's going to uh, probably a bit good idea to get underneath the microphone cable, George. <laughs> okay, so our SDR is plugged in, um, and our SDR switch is in position. Let's uh, power up and um, see if it's uh, if it's all working or not. Turbines to speed. No, it's not because I haven't plugged it in yet. Ah! That had me worried. It's coming on. That's a good start. It's not drawing a million amps. That's also a good start. At the moment, um, let's go to the Hermes light. That's our Hermes light on antenna one. Bands have been really, really, really quiet, which is not helpful. But it doesn't look like there's anything there, which makes me think that uh, something's wrong. Either selectors are wrong or... I can't remember which one it's on. But you should be able to see when you select it. So we're receiving... And if I switch to dummy, yep. Yeah, so for a while there, I thought there was an issue with the box, the magic antenna box, which wouldn't surprise me. I built it, so <laughs> things are going to go wrong. But uh, that's when I started thinking about uh, the million and one uh, videos I've watched on this antenna uh, switch. And if memory serves me correctly, Inside this little box here, there's a jumper lead that you can pull off so that it will allow it both receive on both the SDR and the rig that you're using at the time. And that's how I want to set this up. Otherwise, uh, the receive on the actual rig I've got will be dead every time. So we are going to open up the box and have a look and see if that jumper is in there. Now we get uh, to have a look at uh, just how good this is constructed or how badly it's constructed. And there you have it, folks. And it actually says on there, um, J5, dual receive when uh, dual receive when receive, and normal operation. Normal operation means that it uh, it only allows you to receive on the SDR. So we just have to pull that off, and then hopefully our problem is solved. Got to say, construction of this thing is pretty good. Components look like they've been well soldered. Connectors aren't too bad. Now, all in all, it, uh, it looks good. What do you think? Comment below. Okay, so some of you may be wondering why I'm doing this. And the main reason is that I like to play with uh, QRP gear. I'm planning on building some more Drew Diamond designs and some transmitters, old school transmitters, Sprat designs, simple stuff on a weekend that I can smash out ugly style. And that's a lot easier than building a transceiver or a receiver for that matter. And I do want to do that as well. But uh, when I'm feeling lazy and I just want to have the fun of getting a simple transmitter on, online, um, I need a receiver. And so I can use the uh, Air Spy Discovery as my receiver. Now this is the Wireless Institute of Australia Morse broadcast because the bands are absolutely a disaster today. But let's pretend I've zero beated this guy and I'm working him. Now I've got myself tuned up on the Hermes, but let's pretend I had a transmitter here. That's the SDR switch. When I hit transmit, and I have checked to make sure there's nobody there. Um, when I hit transmit, watch what happens over here. So as you can see, the activation happens. Um, we've got nice uh, SWR happening as well. And um, so, um, and I've identified myself. So there you have it, folks. I can play QRP here. 
I've got a receiver that I can use and I can also use it as a pan adapter um, and it will work up to 100 um, watts so if I'm playing around with the TS520 I still should be okay although um, I really want to get that operating separately on a separate switch so that I'm not mixing QRP with QRO because a lot of the time, um, for instance, my antenna box here, I'm, I've built everything with the idea of working QRP. It's much more forgiving. That's it in a nutshell. Now there's been a million and one YouTube videos on this SDR switch and so I'm not going to go into it in depth. I just thought I'd show you why I've got it, how I'm going to use it. You'll be seeing it in, uh, in later videos. Cheers. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. I've had a lot of fun this weekend. I made a very long video and this very short video and lots of videos in the pipeline. So like I said earlier in the video, hit the like, hit the subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more of this Shack Madness 73. And I'll see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering. Single malt. Nothing like it.